Hey guys, how you doing? I'm back here with little Marty. We're going for our walk. Come on, Marty. Let's go. The snow is melted. Spring is in the air. Well, spring. I'm still wearing my toque. Do you guys say toque where you're from? It's a toque. <laughs> it's a beautiful day, but it's early in the morning. Still a little chilly, but it's going to be nice. I thought I'd wrap up a topic here and uh, let you know what's on my mind. Uh, Restrictions are being lifted across the country, slowly but surely, province-wide and uh, federally. All uh, uh, restrictions for COVID are slowly being eliminated. The latest one being the, uh, uh, the mandate of having to, for Canadian citizens, fully vaccinated Canadian citizens returning to the country after flying, uh, not having to take a COVID test before being allowed back in the country. Imagine that, that that was ever a mandate, that uh, uh, you were, you're not allowed to fly unless you're fully vaccinated with two or three shots. But if you do fly somewhere on holidays and you want to come back to your country that you're a citizen of, even though you're fully vaccinated and everyone on the plane is fully, has to be by law fully vaccinated, you had to take a test to be allowed back into your country. And if you tested positive, even if you had no symptoms, you weren't allowed back in your own country as a citizen. What a strange uh, time we live in. But anyways, that's uh, going to be lifted as of April 1st. And uh, lots of the mass mandates and lots of the mandates have, uh, are being lifted slowly across the country. And some people are thanking the truckers who uh, protested. I don't know if it was the truckers or if it's just the natural course of uh, the pandemic and governments finally uh, seeing the way public opinion is going, uh, we're basically tired of it and want to live our free lives again uh, and not have to endure mandates forever. But that's what's happening. But uh, let me wrap up this topic uh, because of uh, uh, the effect that that trucker protest ha had in Canada is going to be more profound than a lot of people realize. Uh, you guys know what happened uh, about a month ago. A bunch of truckers on the west coast, mainly uh, organized by uh, some truckers in Alberta, the right wing province in Canada. They wanted to protest all mandates, especially the one of uh, them having to be vaccinated to to cross the US and Canadian border. Even though Canada and the US both had introduced rules that truckers now must be vaccinated to cross the border. They decided to protest and they started a convoy and they went from the west coast and drove all the way to Ottawa. And while they were driving across and protesting, it was a, a legitimate freedom of speech protest. Everyone has the right and the freedom to protest or, or show their opinion. And that's what they did. Then they got to Ottawa and they parked their trucks in front of the parliament buildings. And the police even helped them do that. And they thought, well, they're going to protest and then they're going to pack up and leave in a couple of days. But they did. They stayed. They stayed for three, four weeks. And after a couple, three days, it became apparent that it was no longer a protest, it was more of an occupation. And uh, well, they set up bouncy castles and hot tubs. There was also some other protests, uh, one particular one where some truckers blocked the most heavily used bridge in Canada, the Windsor Bridge, which uh, uh, carries the most trade between the Canada and the United States. They blocked that bridge off and some other truckers blocked the border crossing in Alberta. And it was getting, uh, you know, it was in the news every day. You probably heard about it even where you guys are from. But what happened? Let's, uh, let me just tell you what happened. The border crossing in, uh, that was blocked in Alberta was eventually just uh, dismantled by the police, regular police. And they actually found some uh, whack jobs there that had uh, guns and, and uh, lots of ammunition and looked like they were up to some nefarious, just whack jobs that were part of that protest. Uh, well, they, you know, they, they showed up there. They were arrested. The Windsor Bridge was cleared by the police. They just convinced the truckers to leave. Uh, but that left the, the, the big convoy that was parked in Ottawa. The police chief in Ottawa refused to do anything and then resigned. He waited for three weeks, over three weeks, without really doing anything. And I, I suspect that the, the, the police chief from Ottawa was a sympathizer and he didn't want to do anything. He resigned, they got a new police chief. But then our Prime Minister, the brilliant man that he is, decided that he would implement the Emergencies Act to deal with the situation. 
Now, the Emergencies Act is this piece of legislation in Canada that is, it used to be called the War Measures Act, but it was, it's been revamped to a more modern version called the Emergencies Act, to be used in cases of extreme emergency uh, where the, there's a threat to the nation, that, to the very core of our nation. The Act contains a specific definition of national emergency that makes clear how serious a situation needs to be before the act can be relied upon. A national emergency is an urgent, temporary, and critical situation that seriously endangers the health and safety of Canadians or that seriously threatens the ability of the Government of Canada to preserve the sovereignty, security, and territorial integrity of Canada. It must be a situation that cannot be effectively dealt with by provinces and territories or by any other law of Canada. There are four types of emergencies that can be declared under the Emergencies Act. A public welfare emergency, a public order emergency, an international emergency, a war emergency. It was used once in the past by uh, Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who happens to be the father of the Prime Minister now. It was used decades ago when there was truly a, uh, a national crisis. There was a, a group of terrorists in Quebec called uh, the FLQ, the Fédération de Liberté de Québec. They wanted to secede, they wanted to take Quebec out of Canada. They wanted to separate and they wanted to use violent means to achieve that. They started kidnapping members of parliament. And Marty is having fun. Marty's found the playmate. Come on, Marty. We're doing a video here. You can't do that. <laughs> the, the Fédération de Liberté de Québec, the FLQ, they wanted to use uh, uh, violent means to achieve their results. And they went so far as to kidnap members of parliament. And they actually killed, started murdering uh, members of parliament. Once they started murdering one particular member of parliament, uh, it was, the situation was getting out of the control and Pierre Elliott Trudeau at that point declared the War Measures Act, an act that basically gives the government total power, suspends pretty much all civil liberties and enables the government to do whatever it wants to quash whatever the situation is. And at that time they immediately went out and arrested hundreds, hundreds of people uh, without warrants and they just swept through the area and, and basically a a huge policing uh, exercise that squashed the movement in its tracks. They arrested uh, hundreds and hundreds of innocent people as well and uh, got all the FLQ members and, and basically stopped the crisis and then uh, released the, the, uh, the innocent people. There was a lot of people dragged in the net, unfortunately, uh, but were arrested and then released. The government had ultimate power and they crushed this terrorist movement. Now there's some still today that argue back and forth. Was it necessary to implement the War Measures Act? It infringed on a lot of uh, freedoms of innocent people. And I, I guess the sentiment is by and large most people think yes it was uh, the correct thing to do but there's, there's a lot of people that disagree and say no that was an overreach by the government particularly some sensitive people in Quebec that were affected. But that's the one time that the War Measures Act was used in Canada. Since that time, the, the Act was modernized and changed to rewritten and edited for modern times. And it's now called the Emergencies Act. We're going to talk about how profound the use of this Emergency Act is in Canada going forward. And, and there's some outcomes that are not going to be what, uh, what you expect. It's it's, it's a very complicated issue and uh, unfortunately it's an issue that a lot of people just have a gut reaction to. Uh, I disagreed with the trucker so I think it was right that he used the Emergency Act. They got rid of those assholes that were uh, occupying Ottawa. That's the typical reaction. I agree with the truckers. There shouldn't be any mandate so he shouldn't have used it. And, and both of those reactions are irrelevant. It doesn't matter whether you agree or you disagree. Um, you, you can't look at it as just a means to an end. You know, he, in, he invoked the Emergency Act and now the problem solved. So it was a good thing. Well, if someone jaywalks, do you, uh, 
if someone crosses the street with a red light, do you invoke the emergency act to arrest them? Well, we stopped them from jaywalking, therefore it worked. So what happened? This is the, the timeline. The, uh, uh, the uh, Marty's found another dog. <laughs> He's trying to hump a dog. The, the, the uh, protest on the Windsor Bridge was cleared by just regular police. The protest on the Alberta border was cleared by just regular police. That left the, uh, the truckers in Ottawa who were set up, were parked there. They had set up uh, bouncy castles and hot tubs and were basically partying and hanging out there um, and being a nuisance. After a certain period of time, they were viewed as breaking the law. Uh, they were basically, the law they were breaking was they were illegally parked. They were illegally parked and occupying an area they shouldn't be. So our Prime Minister invoked the Emergency Act because some truckers were illegally parked. Which makes you think, well, what was the plan? Were we going to call in the military to come in and uh, the Army Corps of Engineers to deflate some bouncy castles or uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the SWAT team military commandos to come and drain some hot tubs? Uh, or why was it necessary? Now, I, I mean, I'm exaggerating here a bit, but why was it necessary? And the, the, the debate is, a lot, of, a lot of people are saying, well, it wasn't necessary, it was a government overreach. And you can have your own opinion, and I ask you for a minute to just, just put your opinion on hold and hear me out here, because I don't think the issue has to do with what opinion you have, whether you, you disagreed with the truckers, therefore it was a good idea to uh, implement the Emergency Act. Act. That's not how you should view it. In any case of government overreach, you have to think. You have to think of what the precedent sets, not whether it was necessary or not. Even though there are a lot of people saying, well, it wasn't necessary at all, because in the end, they just got a lot of police to come in and get rid of the protesters. Uh, the one thing the Emergency Act allowed the government to do uh, that they wouldn't have been able to otherwise is to freeze bank accounts to those people who were supporting the truckers. In some cases, just some people who made donations online, not really thinking that uh, you know, they were breaking the law. Maybe when they were driving across the country, when they, they just were moved by the movement and decided to donate money, they froze some 200 accounts of Canadians. I don't know if they've since uh, uh, freed those accounts or not. I don't know. But the point is, the point is, when you, if you just judge these things from what your point of view is, if you just judge these government actions on whether you agree or disagree, I disagreed with the truckers, therefore I think it was a good idea. If you just view it like that, one day, you have to understand that one day, the shoe is going to be on the other foot. One day, you're going to be on the opposite side. One day, something's going to be happening uh, that, you, that you agree with. And here, let me give you a... Um, just a hypothetical situation here. I'm just going to make this up. Uh, 30 years from now, for whatever reason, Canada elects a government. Uh, the leader is very, very uh, extreme right wing bordering on a uh, white supremacist racist. OK, uh, that just ha he happened to we happen to elect a leader who leans that way. And that leader uh, it, uh, shows more and more and more his racist white supremacist tendencies and people start to uh, protest that this leader is a uh, is a white supremacist racist and they start taking to the street and protesting and they march on Ottawa and they say you're a racist uh, you, you've implemented these policies that are discriminatory and we don't agree with you and people and they have the right to protest and they go to Ottawa and protest well then this leader who you may say well you know a white supremacist racist is not a good guy we we should protest him. Well, he has precedents now that in the past, the Emergencies Act was used to suppress protests. There were, we used the Emergency Act because some people were illegally parked. So I'm going to use the Emergency Act to, uh, uh, to get the, the military to remove those protesters that are saying I'm a white supremacist. The precedent that set gets us closer to having a, uh, a leader or a government 
that could become a, a wannabe dictator, a wannabe... Uh, look at... There's two countries in the world right now that I know of that have implemented the equivalent of our Emergencies Act. Ukraine has implemented uh, what, whatever their version of uh, War Measures Act, Emergency Act, where they suspended civil liberties. Uh, they're not allowing uh, men between the age, I think, of 18 and 60 to leave the country. They're being called to arms to defend. Uh, they're not allowed to move freely. They're not allowed to leave. The government has control because uh, they're dealing with uh, an invasion. Russia has uh, implemented uh, their version, it's probably more constant there, of their uh, emergency uh, act. Uh, if you are in Russia now and you're protesting uh, the, uh, what they call the military exercise in Ukraine, if you use the word war or if you use the word invasion, you can be jailed for 15 years. Uh, if you spread on the media uh, dissenting points of view from the government, you can be apprehended and, uh, and put in jail. Your civil liberties are forfeit. Those two countries now have, for whatever, for their own reasons, implemented uh, an emergent war measures emergency act, uh, similar to what, what we had. Can you imagine? Look at what's happening in those two countries. And in my country, in Canada, we had a prime minister that went so far as uh, uh, enacting the most civil liberty a uh, stunning piece of legislation for some illegally parked trucks. And it sets a precedent that regardless of, hey, Marty, I'm doing a video. Regardless of whether you agree or disagree, it has nothing to do with what your opinion is uh, on, on uh, wh whether you agree with the, the trucker's point of view for the protest, whether you believe there should be more mandates, whether you uh, believe that people uh, you shouldn't be allowed to cross the border unless you're vaccinated. You should wear a mask when you go to the baseball game. It doesn't matter what your point of view is on those independent issues. What matters is, what matters is, is the government setting a new precedent and overreaching? Because at the end of the day, 30 years from now, no one's going to give a flying fuck about whether truckers need to be vaccinated to cross the border or whether you had to wear masks for six months or seven months or you know or whether uh, you, you you had to go to a superstore and they were only allowed to let 50 percent capacity into their store or whatever the stupid rules were of the time no one that is going to be something that's in the past what 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 will be remembered is the government power and the precedent set. And if we've gone into an era where now a government can just willy-nilly uh, de decree the use of the Emergency Act to squash anyone that's against them, you've lost, you're losing democracy. You're, you're letting your country, uh, the institutions uh, and our, our fundamental freedoms and the way our government works you're, you're you're letting it go down the toilet because some child man trudeau uh set a dangerous precedent that can be used in the future now by people that you may not necessarily agree with and he amplified the rhetoric it's this typical uh political uh, bullshit that we have these days where it's all about pitting one side against the other and painting the other side as uh, uh you know extreme and this amplified rhetoric to get people angry. And uh, this prime minister has just done a terrible job. The way the Emergency Act works in Canada, the prime minister just decrees the act. He just says, I am implementing the Emergency Act. And then it starts. Then he has ultimate power. And that's what he did. But there's a clause in the act that says, once you give yourself this ultimate power, the, the House of Commons, the elected members of the country must debate uh, your implementation of the act and vote on it. While they're debating and, and voting on it, you have all the power of the emergency act. So you can implement the act and then you can have all that power for a period of about a week while the House of Commons debates it. And the House may vote no. It's not necessary, in which case the, the powers are ended. Or the House may vote yes. And then you can keep uh, those powers indefinitely until you think the emergency is over. 
So he invoked the Emergency Act, okay, uh, and then he had the powers. He started freezing accounts and doing whatever he, he wanted to do. And then the House of Commons started debating whether the, the Emergency Act was necessary. The first day of debate was all the Liberal uh, MPs standing up one by one, giving their point of view. And of course, they're part of the government. And they were all agreeing and making the case that, yes, this is necessary. It's a, 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 an emergency in the country. And they were giving all the reasons why it was necessary to use the Emergency Act. And this was on TV, of course, on all the government funded uh, uh, the television and, and radio stations, the CBC, which is funded by the government. They all had this on TV, all the liberal MPs standing up, talking about how it was necessary to have the Emergency Act. And then, then that day was over. The second day of debate of the Emergency Act was the day when the opposition members, namely the Conservatives, would have a chance to stand up and give their reasons for disapproving of the Act. Okay, this is the debate that they were going to have. But when the second day was about to commence, the government cancelled Parliament. The government said, no, we've cancelled Parliament for today. The day when the opposition was going to get up and give the reasons why the Emergency Act was a bad idea. What was their reason for cancelling the um, uh, the discussion in Parliament because there was an emergency going on. They used the very fact that they declared an emergency and implemented the act, the reason that it was too dangerous for the Parliament to get together and debate it. And that was just a brutal, brutal misuse of, uh, of authority and power. It was just so pathetic. Most people don't even know that it happened because it was not covered on TV. Uh, it was just a little footnote that uh, uh, the, the situation is too dangerous in Ottawa because the Parliament building where they debate was across the street from where the truckers were. It was okay to debate it on one day, but the next day it was too dangerous on the day that the opposition was going to voice their objection to it. And in fact, days later, when they did carry on with the debate, our, our leader was so divisive and so disgusting uh, that uh, a member of parliament, conservative member, who happens to be Jewish, who happens to have uh, parents, or I think it's her dad or her father, I believe, I'm not sure, was uh, a Holocaust survivor. She got up and asked a question to which our prime minister replied in the most disgusting, divisive way. Let me play the clip for you. Hopeful vision for public life isn't a naive dream. It could be a powerful force for change. If Canadians are to trust their government, their government needs to trust Canadians. Those are the words of the Prime Minister in 2015. These people, very often misogynistic, racist, women haters, science deniers, the fringe. Same Prime Minister six years later as he fans the flames of an unjustified national emergency. So, Mr. Speaker, when did the Prime Minister lose his way when did it happen? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. We will choose to stand with Canadians who deserve to be able to get to their jobs, who be able to get their lives back. These illegal protests need to stop, and they will, Mr. Speaker. I'm a strong Jewish woman and a member of this house and a descendant of Holocaust survivors and I have never made to, I've, it's never been singled out and I have never been made to feel less, except for today when the Prime Minister accused me of standing with swastikas. I think he owes me an apology, I'd like an apology and I think he owes an apology to all members of this house. I want to encourage all members to be as judicious as possible when using words in this chamber and to reflect on what they say on all cases. So there's our leader in the House of Commons debating the use of his uh, Emergency Act, just waving, sweeping statement, saying, well, you stand with, the, with the, the swastikers, you stand with the Nazis just 
a blanket statement painting everyone that is, uh, does not have his opinion, everyone who opposes his view as a Nazi. Because everyone hates Nazis, right? That's good politics th these days. That's how politics works these days. Can you imagine uh, how low you can go there? So according to our prime minister, um, these people that were uh, protesting against mandates, uh, vaccination requirements, uh, and all mandate, mandates, government mandates in this um, pandemic, they stand with swastika waving Nazis. Just a, it, it's just so brutal. So I guess according to our prime minister, the state of Florida, who has legislated uh, against, uh, you're not allowed to impose mass mandates, uh, the whole state of, of, of uh, Florida must be just all Nazis, right? Or uh, all of Texas, uh, is, uh, they're all Nazis. Or, or the country of Sweden that did not impose uh, uh, mandates like we did in Canada, that had a different point of view, that decided to uh, uh, go through the pandemic in, uh, in what they thought was a more reasonable, sensible way, for whatever reason. They must all be Nazis because they don't share the same uh, point of view as uh, as our prime minister and if, if those Swedish people were here and they expressed their views on, on how they think the pandemic should be handled uh, th that they should just be their accounts should be we should implement the emergencies act freeze their accounts throw them in jail with no no right to a lawyer and just remove their civil liberties and treat them like the Nazis they are this is how this is how you get this is how you lose your democracy, how you lose, uh, like our, our institutions and the way we formed our governments and our constitution and our charter of rights and, and everything that we've, all the fabric of our society that we rely on just swept away uh, by one decision. And funny enough, in my country, the majority of people agree. They say, yeah, he was right to use the emergency act. Yeah, damn truckers, they got rid of them. Now they say that because they uh, they despised and they hated, you know, the truckers occupied Ottawa and it became a, a shit show that they were occupying uh, the downtown there for three, four weeks. And the people who lived there were getting really tired of having their city occupied uh, and, and they were breaking the law. So most people thought, well, you know, we need to get, get them out of there. And so they just agree that he used the emergency act. Why didn't the police just uh, handle it uh, faster and more thoroughly right from the beginning? There, there's a lot of whys and how come, and uh, but the point is, what am I trying to say? The point is, guys, those of you in my country that just said, yeah, I, I agree that he used it. History and future, the future will come back to bite you. Okay, this is how, this is how it happens. In, in the future, there will be a situation where you're on the other side of the fence and you're fighting for something uh, or, or protesting something or want, want your opinion heard on something and someone in power that you don't agree with is just going to go, they're just going to say, nah, I don't agree with your point of view. You don't agree with me. You want to stand with the swastikers. stickers. You, you're a Nazi. You know, your, your freedoms are gone. We're freezing your account and you're in jail. And that's what we see in some shithole countries like Russia, and, and North Korea and the fucking armpits of the world that we want to be different from. And in this small, tiny step Canada has taken, we've, we've, most people don't realize it or they don't understand the severity of it, but we've taken one tiny step, one tiny step towards that fate. Now, I think we have too many smart people here and too good a foundation in our institutions and our laws and 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 not a lot of of radicals that we should be okay that we should be okay and this will just go down in history as uh just a complete colossal fuck up by a a, a child man uh, uh, justin trudeau just a, a power grabbing uh selfish prick uh, decision hopefully that'll be the case but, but it's possible, it's possible um, that, you know, that are we going to see the Emergency Act being used um, in the future, like commonly, 
whenever someone disagrees with the government? Is, is that what our country is going to slowly start becoming? Whenever there's an issue or a policy that the government uh, is going to wants done, if you oppose it, it's an emergency and your, your freedoms are wiped out and the government gets its way. And remember, he did this as the, a minority leader. He does not have the majority of the seats in the, in the House of Commons. He has a minority, minority government. And, and it wasn't clear in the debate whether the House of Commons would actually vote yes. He got the power when he implemented the Emergency Act and then there was a chance that the House would vote no. It's not necessary. The House did vote yes because, of course, the, the left wing, uh, just whack job socialist Jagmeet Singh from the NDP reluctantly voted with the government for whatever reason. I don't know why, but they did. Uh, and uh, anyways, they implemented the Emergency Act. At the end of the day, the truckers were moved. The police came in and they very peacefully, without using the military, without using strong arm tactics, they slowly dispersed the crowd. Most of the truckers drove away on their own when uh, police finally went to the, their truck and knocked on the window or in some cases smashed the window and said, if you don't leave now, you're going to be arrested. Most of them left on their own, which they could have done without the Emergency Act. But there will still be people that, uh, that uh, agree and disagree. I'm saying be careful what you agree with because it sets dangerous precedents. And that's why, that's why a lot of uh, leaders in countries in the world were shocked uh, that we were, that we did that. There was a lot of countries that were very shocked, and we got a lot of bad press all over the world that that's uh, what our government was doing. And in fact, right after the debate when the House of Commons voted yes, it was okay to use the Emergency Act, it was only a day or two later that he uh, stopped the act. A day or two later, right before Russia invaded Ukraine, when he realized, hey, if we're going to be in a situation here where there's three countries that have emergency acts implemented, Russia, Ukraine, and Canada. And, and, and the little child man probably thought, well, huh, I guess the situation is a little bit more severe in uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia. Maybe we don't really need the emergency act anymore. Uh, anyways, guys, that's all I got. I know, controversial issue. Um, my opinion is the uh, using the Emergency Act was a, a government overreach and could lead to very serious um, uh, sets of very serious precedent and could lead to some bad, bad outcomes. And I think they could have handled the truckers who were illegal in their uh, occupation of, uh, of Ottawa after their initial free protest. They did uh, cross the line. Uh, they should have just been handled uh, by police without the Emergency Act. That's my uh, opinion. Okay. If we have to implement what used to be the War Measures Act, Emergency Act for some illegally parked trucks and bouncy castles and hot tubs, if that's what we have to do, then brace yourself because there's a lot worse to come, is my, uh, is my opinion. I'm glad it's over and I hope this leader gets, uh, does not win again. I hope Justin Trudeau gets defeated in the next election. He's uh, been uh, bad for this country. He's a terrible leader. He's divisive. He, uh, he, he, He's caused a lot of um, polarization in our country, and I hope he loses the next election. That's my uh, opinion, guys. I know I, I went on a little bit longer than I should. Have a great day. Stay safe. Stay happy. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll catch you on the next one. You don't have to answer his question, sir. You don't have to answer his question, sir. He does have to. No, he doesn't. No comments? Fill me no, from the I sidewalk. Don't. Uh, you want comments? Fill me from the sidewalk. Yeah, yeah you're too many Try, you, Yes, I know. You you're abusing Try old men. You swung at me. That, you're not a Canadian. If I swung at you, it's on film, so you're fine. Drive because I tuned at the horn. Yeah. 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 Come and hit me. Yeah, yeah. it's called yeah. communism. That is why you're pulled over. It's called oh, communism. Oh, it's communism. You don't have to show anything. You didn't do anything wrong. I know I have. You have the right of freedom, of choice. Of you have the right to beep your horn or whatever. Why are you doing this? Because it's an offense. Of it's what? It's an offense to beep your horn. No, it is not an offense since when? Tell me it's not. I have it written down that it is. It's actually an so offense. So you're, you're right? standing with your lying government? 
You're lying, cop. Right. He's right. You know that your superior is a liar, and he went on the media lying to the Canadian people. Now you're Talk doing this. Have me fired. Have me What's fired. your back name and badge number? Nine two Jones. Jones. Here, you have everything you need to have me fired. Yeah, look at what they're doing to an old man. Okay. That's a, a citizen yeah, of Canada. Shoot at the horn, you pissed yeah. off. That's right. That's so is everybody who lives here. I can be a Doesn't matter. Man. This what is this is the capital matter? of Canada. Drop your mandates. Trouble. Stand down. I don't, I don't have You're not doing your job. You're representing hate. You're a terrorist. That's You're a terrorist. You're representing hate. No. You're representing hate. Call your lawyer. You'd be really good. Call your lawyer. I don't care. Give me your driver's license. Insurance registration. You have to talk up your bill for this. Maybe you are on your side, but I mean, focus. Because I the right. he That's right. He's a he's a supporter for Canadian freedom. He is, who cares? They shouldn't live in the capital of Canada. Then they better leave. Because until the mandates are ended, this is not going to stop. Stop harassing old men. You don't have to show them anything. It's against the law. You just for what? Hey, what are you doing? Hey, hey. That's assault. I've got it all on video. Yeah, he failed to ID. Get back. Hey, hey. Get back. Get back. We're back. We're filming. We're doing our part. It's all on video. No, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Hey, Ritz. Ritz, stand down. Stand down. Stand down. Rich. No, it's peaceful. No, let let them let them be. Attack me, you fucking do This is going right to the media. YouTube. What's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge badge number? What's your name and badge number? What's your name and badge number? Yeah, you're Look, they're hurting an old man. A Canadian citizen. It's communism. This is communism. He's scared. Communist. Call your police chief. He'll back you up. Call the police. Call your police chief. Arrested an old man. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Yeah, I know he beat the horn. What the fuck do they represent?